turning red is such an impressive um, achievement on every level. So when you were 13, did you expect to see yourself directing an animated feature? And if not, what did you hope to become when you grew up? <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely did not expect <laughs> myself to be here uh, decades later directing a feature. Um, but I, I, I knew ever since I was little that I loved drawing and um, I loved telling stories through drawings. Uh, that was always my way of meeting new friends and of, of you know, just like making friends at, at school. And that was kind of my identity. I was like the drawer in, in my classroom growing up. And uh, I knew at least like if there was any way I could do that for a living, if I could draw somehow and do that for a living, I would be happy. I think when I was 13, like, you know, I was still, of course, like living with my parents in like super shelters. So I was like, how can I balance my parents' expectation with my love? Maybe I'll become a medical illustrator. So that kind of combines my parent want, my parents wanting me to be a doctor and me wanting to draw. So no, it, it, it was very far from my brain at that moment of, of being a director. <laughs> So yeah, so the next question, um, the artistic expression in this film is incredible. It's such an inspiration. Um, what advice would you give to a young 13 year old who may be interested in doing this type of work down the road? Oh, yeah, I would say, uh, you know, just keep keep drawing. Like if, if, if art and if storyboarding and animation, if that's what's passionate for you just to keep doing it every day. I kept the sketchbook with me um, throughout middle school and high school and college. And I just remember I would draw on it every day, any ideas that I had or characters that um, I came up with, I would just put it in there. But uh, you don't have, like in order to be a director or a filmmaker, you don't have to go through the same path that I did. You can get there through writing. Uh, so in that sense, you know, anybody I think has access to like a word processor, a computer, your phone, uh, just make sure you're doing that thing every day and, and practicing and just continuing to exercise your creative brain. I would just say that um, I think, yeah, I, I mean, it kind of as Domi said, it's like storytelling is, you know, it can take any a bunch of different forms. And I think that what's really cool right now is that between kind of you know, phones um, and even just, you know, the access to even just some software online, people can get pretty easily get access to kind of opportunities to tell stories, even if that's, you know, through video or through drawing and just cutting stuff together. Like there's just some cool tools out there that kind of pretty, that are pretty relatively easy to use. I say that because I'm <clears throat> not very good at using some of them, but I would just encourage them to just keep making stuff just make it and show it and then look at it and realize and I say this to my kids all the time which is like I think we spend four years redoing things and, and taking notes and having to go back to it and be like all right how do we make it better and so also just getting used to the process of like being surrounding yourself with people who you trust to criticize you a little bit and give you good feedback and then don't get discouraged by that and go back in and try it again so it's not something that um you can avoid you're not going to be a genius out of the gate like it's all hard work <laughs> and uh and make sure you're brought you have people around you who are going to give you you trust their notes and their ideas um that's what it's kind of about here i'm just a bit curious um which music artists were you crazy about when you were 13 and what are you currently listening to now oh man uh i was really into avril lavigne and vanessa carlton and michelle branch uh, and definitely NSYNC as, as well. Um, but definitely Avril Lavigne. I think she was my first foray into like the, that rebellious, uh, you know, punk world. And like she wore her dad's tie and I was like, man, I want to do that too. Uh, and then nowadays, um, it's so funny. Uh, I'm listening actually to a lot of retro music. I've really started loving Japanese city pop from the 80s that I kind of discovered this like niche uh genre kind of on the internet I've been re really into that because it again like hearing that music reminds me of anime from that era uh all the anime that inspired turning red like Sailor Moon and Ranma Half uh 
So that's what I'm into right now. Got it. And what about you, Lindsay? Um, I was a huge Prince fan. Janet Jackson and Prince were like my go-tos in middle school. Like, I feel like I could still sing every single lyric to their album. <laughs> um, <laughs> and do frequently. Um, so those were my two kind of go-tos, uh, then. And then now I, I mean, I listen to a lot of pop actually. Um, I do that partial. I try to make the excuse that it's because I have three teens at home, but really I also (laughs) love pop music and, uh, and hip hop. So I love like right now I'm listening to like Doja Cat and, um, I mean, I'm a huge Bieber fan. That's right. I said it. You can hear that. (laughs) Um, but I also listen to a lot of uh, a lot of Kanye and um I listen to you know some Drake mostly more Kanye um I love Kid Cudi you know that kind of stuff too so I I I listen to what my kids are listening to and then I select from there well that's all the time I have but it was so lovely talking with both of you congratulations and yeah we're excited to see this on Disney plus Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.